I'm spending four nights in the beautiful Valois White Men National Forest over here in Eastern Oregon. I got out of the smoke for a little while and I hope you will join me on this multi-day backpacking adventure. Hi everyone, this is Andrea with Adventures and Dreams and I can't wait to be out on this trail and out in the mountains here in Eastern Oregon. I couldn't believe my eyes when I drove near this region and I saw these mountains just peek out um, of the valley. <laughs> it was amazing. I didn't film it because it was late in the evening already and I had to find a camp spot really fast. And so I just hurried to get to my parking and find some camping for the night. So yeah, I set up my camp last night. It was already dark and just went to sleep after over six hours of driving. But looking around here, it was absolutely worth it to come here. It's so beautiful and uh, I'm going to be on a, I think it's six or seven miles one way, but it's out and back. So it'll, it'll be over 12 miles altogether. And at the end of my journey, there's a lake settled right in the mountains on the base of one. And the photos look so amazing. So I can't wait to see it. Just settled in this morning, had some breakfast saw some people on horses one guy with was it four horses or five but yeah let's get going here a little bit and uh, i have a long way up the hill zigzagging back and forth until i get up on top of the valley here Have a wonderful day. Have a good hike. Thank you. Well, I think that's you. Awesome. Well, hello. You're awesome. <laughs> How did you find such a cool contraption? Um, on the internet. Really? It kind of keeps the phone stable so it doesn't jiggle around when I ooh. I move around. Yeah, because my hand shakes. You so. see how this does? That is... Oh! Have a great day. You too. Thank you for sharing. Yep. Mm. I've always been captivated by the history of the places that I visit and the tale of the Valawa region is a tragic one. Centuries ago, around 1400, the Nez Perce people first called this land home. Their connection to this pristine landscape was profound. Then, in 1855, the arrival of European settlers marked a turning point. Chiefs of the Nez Perce signed a treaty to safeguard their ancestral territory even though they had to relinquish a portion of their land. But the discovery of gold in the 1860s ignited a shift that would change things forever. Prospectors flooded in, altering the landscape and the lives of its inhabitants. In response, the US government proposed a new treaty that would shrink the Nez Perce reservation to less than a quarter of its original size. Tensions simmered as settlers encroached on the native land. President Grant issued a formal order in 1873, instructing settlers to vacate the territory, yet peace remained elusive. Matters escalated when General Otis Howard issued a dire ultimatum to the tribe in 1877. Leave the homeland within 30 days or face forced eviction by the army. Fearing all-out conflict, the Nez Perce embarked on a harrowing 1,170-mile journey in pursuit of freedom and tranquility, leaving behind their cherished home forever. Today, the Wallawa Whiteman National Forest covers an area of 2,300,000 acres, including 600,000 acres of designated wilderness. 
even some old growth forest remains in the region. These remote areas are the home of diverse plants and wildlife, such as wolves, shiras moose, bighorn sheep, mountain goats, and even wolverines. This hydropower project is just one example where a careful balance with nature was achieved. Water levels are constantly monitored in the forebay to determine how much water can be diverted from the river to generate electricity. During low water periods, priority is given to the river. Well, I found a pretty decent camping spot. There really isn't much at all, all along the way. It's just all steep sides and brush and thick forest. So this is the first thing I found. And it might be just in time because this thunderstorm seems to be coming this way. Uh, I hope to get a little bit further, but I have to take the safest thing I have right now because there aren't many options. So let's put up the tent real quick and hopefully that rain doesn't come or if it's rain, then maybe no thunder, that'll be good. So I was pretty happy to find this camp, even though it's probably the worst I ever had. Very crooked with rocks and, and plants that I'm camping on that I really don't want to do, but... Well, this view is amazing. I realize that I actually got really close to the path again. I was going up a hill to get away from the path and instead the path zigzagged and came right back to me. <laughs> so now I'm just a few feet away from the path and uh, I don't like that too much but I really have no option because um, campsites are extremely rare here. I am definitely hungry. This day, it, it went well, but I thought I could get a little bit further. But it was just constantly going uphill. There was no break. So now I'm looking forward to my peak refuel chicken alfredo. So, mm. oh my God, their meals are amazing.
Mm. This tastes like it was made at home. Wow. I used to like um, good to go the most, which is still very good. Uh, but this, mm, so creamy and very flavorful. I see rosemary here. I see herbs, chicken. Mm. So the people we met earlier on the horses, they came back. And they were like, you made it. <laughs> um, they um, they loved this spot too for camping, so. And also um, the guy with the multiple horses that we saw this morning, he came back as well. And then a couple of hikers and everybody was super friendly. Even though I'm practically camping right next to the trail, which is not a great thing, but Nobody minded, so. Oh my God, I can't get over how, how tasty this is. I'm gonna try to go to the lake all the way to the end tomorrow, but I don't know if it's gonna happen. I'm a little less than halfway to the lake, maybe one third. And I still have at least as much elevation gain uh, to do again. So, I don't know. 